Since 2001, Kevin Smith has been the Director of Information and Telecom Services, or ITS, for Alachua County. Kevin is a current member of the Florida Local Government Information Services Association, where he served as a past board member and is currently serving on the Florida Technology Disaster Recovery Committee, a subcommittee of that association. Prior to coming to Alachua County, Kevin worked in the private sector most recently as general manager for a wireless communication company here in Gainesville and in Columbia, Missouri. He also held various management positions for a telephone company in upstate New York. Kevin earned a master's degree in business administration from the Rochester Institute of Technology and a Bachelor of Science degree from St. John Fisher College, both institutions located in Rochester, New York. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Sure. Uh, you know, we're, <coughs> as you well know, we're doing a series of interviews with department heads and it's kind of a civic education 101 thing that we're putting together and these interviews will be available on the website. And, uh, you know, I know certainly before I came to county government, uh, I took ITS completely for granted. And since I've been here, of course, I've, I've learned about the, the massive scope of, of the services that you all provide, uh, both to internal customers and to the citizens of Alachua County. Uh, why don't we just start with kind of an overview about the, the mission of ITS. Tell us about that. Sure. ITS mission statement, I'll just paraphrase it quickly, is to provide a connected community environment here in Alachua County. What we mean by that is to uh, allow people to use their computers to uh, interact with local government for all their services that they need. So we want to expand beyond people being able just to just come in the door and, and stand at a counter, but to do it from home right. and be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, and you are, you are, I mm -hmm. notice, because I've used your services at three in the morning before. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Kevin, uh, you know, at, at first glance, I thought, again, when I first came in, that you took care of the Board of County Commission, but I know your, uh, your services uh, reach out much broader than that. Who, who are the customers of the Alachua County ITS Department? Well, ultimately, our customer are the citizens, right. but the citizens really don't engage directly with our department. Uh, the way they interact with us is we provide the data network for not just, as you mentioned, the Board of County Commissioner Departments, but also the constitutional officers the 8th Judicial Circuit, the Library District, all of these agencies have to come together and it's the network that we manage that allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you've got constitutionals. Do you, do you work with the sheriffs? Are, do they have their own? We provide, the, we provide the network to connect the sheriff's office back to court services and the agencies that they deal with. I see. Uh, the constitutional offices, of course, main, manage and maintain their own computer systems internally. But rather than have everyone have their own little internal functions that don't talk to each other, we provide the network to allow that to all come together. And, and part of what ITS has done is created a really pretty amazing fiber optic network. Can you tell us about that hardware? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, fortunately, back in the 1990s, the county commissioners had the foresight to invest in technology and build a fiber optic ring around inside the city of Gainesville for us to uh, manage our data network over our own lines. That has saved the county considerable amount of money um, over the years, not just for data transmission, but for telephone transmission as well. So all of the facilities here within the city are all connected primarily with our fiber optic network. And then for our <coughs> satellite kind of organizations mm -hmm. like Public Works out in Hague, how, how do they connect? Yeah. We, we utilize the services of, of GRUCOM as well as AT&T, um, whichever has the lowest price to get us out to where we need to be. Uh, to run fiber all the way out to those locations would just be cost prohibitive. But we share services with them, with the, uh, the vendors, and that provides the services out to the outline areas. Uh, Kevin, I know you have a number of divisions, and I think you actually prefer to uh, look at them as teams. Um, so why don't we kind of do a, uh, uh, just an overview of each one. Tell me about your uh, uh, network team. 
Well, the network team, primary responsibility is to oversee the network that we just talked about, the, uh, the connectivity between all the different agencies. Mm -hmm. So they're constantly monitoring um, what's going on in the network, making sure um, we have full connectivity to all the different groups. They also oversee the hardware uh, that everyone uses, the computers, the servers, the routers. So they oversee the, the basically the overall configuration of the network themselves. They make sure it's always upgraded to the most recent technology and always operational for us. How many different plugins are there on this network? <coughs> we are up to over 2,300 ports, we call them, as the uh -huh. plugins. Uh -huh. um, and those 2,300 ports are for the computers, the printers, the scanners. Now we have multi use copiers that also tie back into our network as well. I know every, <coughs> every time someone like <coughs> my division has a bright idea, like a few years ago, we, we thought streaming video would be an amazing service to mm -hmm. offer to citizens. And of course, that's how we think of it, is you think of it and it magically happens, mm -hmm. but the reality of that was uh, a, uh, an investment in hardware and servers that live over in your uh, department right. that are maintained. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, I can't tell you how wonderful it's been working with your team because they inevitably make these things that we imagine reality. Well, we appreciate that. And any time new uh, services come along or, or new possibilities come along, the technology can help out. The biggest barrier we have to overcome is capacity. Once we have enough capacity in place to handle those services, it's not a problem. Right. And usually that's where we at first say, Time out, let's look at the service, what's involved, how is it going to interact with other services that are on the network to make sure that one doesn't collide with the other and slow the system down. Right. As you know, when you go on the internet, the worst thing you want to do is sit there and it's working very slowly. Right. We want to make sure people can interact and communicate during their daily basis and it's working as quickly as possible. So that's what we do is we look at the capacity, we add capacity where we need it, we add the equipment to make sure we're maximizing use of that capacity, and then everyone's happy once we turn on that service. <laughs> Kevin, how, how does the application team integrate into the, that hardware network we've talked about now? Is this where we move into software? <laughs> this is primarily where you move into software. The applications team's primary responsibility is to look at electronic government services, the creation of those services and implementation. And we refer to it as eGov, is the, is the term out there for electronic government services. Um, what my, my team does is when you request a new service that you want to bring online, a department wants a new service, we'll go out there and work with them to first ins look and see is there something already developed that's on the market that will do what they're looking for. Right. In most cases, there isn't because they have a special need that applies primarily to Lachua County. In which case, if we bought something off the market, we'd have to try and change it. And when you try and change an off-the-shelf product, it's very costly. So then we'll look internal and say, can we write this program for them? And in most cases, we usually can, a lot less expensive. There's not the ongoing upgrade cost of an off-the-shelf product or license fees. So if we write it internal, we own it, we can change it, we can modify it. And it's usually a lot less costly. So you have the talent in-house to do that? Yes, we do. I'm very, very pleased to say it's a very talented team of individuals. Uh, most of them are younger than me, so they're very knowledgeable <laughs> on technology. Um, but they really are skilled at doing that cost-benefit analysis that needs to be done when we roll out any new service. Right. And then, okay, so you've got soft hardware, you've got software. Tell me about the operations team. Well, the operations team is very critical for us because they do all the backup that's necessary. And every evening, all the information all the emails that are processed, all the records that are processed in the county government need to be backed up. We are in a sunshine state, so we have to have archives of all of our information. Mm -hmm. So the operations team primary responsibility is to make sure that information is backed up every night. So if there's ever a problem with the system, there's you know, something that crashes, we'll have enough backups in place to bring it back online. The other half of the operations team is our help desk very critical for us because as you know <laughs> there is a day doesn't go by that somebody doesn't have a problem with their computer or a software or an application and the help desk is there to answer their calls all day long and even in the evening if you're working we have an on-call person that handles the help desk calls for us i can't tell you how many times <coughs> i've experienced a little problem that would have taken me days mm -hmm. <laughs> to figure out mm -hmm. where uh, a quick call to the help desk and 30 seconds later i'm up and running again 
And the nice thing is, if, if they can't handle it over the phone, they'll dispatch a technician that's very trained to come over and take care of the problem right on the spot. And just for the folks at home, uh, you mentioned sunshine. And I think to kind of bring that mm -hmm. home, if a commissioner gets an email, <coughs> any citizen can say, I want to see that email. And I can even say, Kevin, I, I want to see the email from four years ago at, not, that came in at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, to correct. that county commissioner. That's correct. Everything yeah. is archived, but what's unique about Alachua County, and I, I believe we're still the only county that does this, as a commissioner receives their email, citizens can go online and look at that email even before the commissioner sees it. Right. It's out there immediately. The second an email arrives for a county commissioner, it is placed out online for citizens to look at. And again, once the commissioner responds, that response automatically goes out online as well. Right. So everything is open. In most counties, they allow their commissioners to screen what they wish to place out online. After it's viewed, now that does get rid of the, you know, the personal emails or spam or other things that don't necessarily apply to county business. But in our case here in Alachua County, everything, everything they receive and send is sent out there for people to look at. And that goes to this commission and this manager's kind of commitment to transparency. Very open, very open right. government. Uh, you have a security team, too. What, what does security do? Well, believe it or not, we do get a lot of spam. Um, I'm sure, as you probably do at home, we also get it here. <laughs> and what people don't realize is close to 100,000 emails try to come into our network on a daily basis. Of those, only 3% make it through our spam controls and filters. 97 percent is spam? 97 percent of the emails are blocked. Is that right? Yes. So if you don't have those spam filters in place, you would have an abundance of email that would come shooting into people's email accounts that they would have to try and clean up, look at, decide what's going on with. But we have parameters, and they're not that very tight parameters, because in county government you do have to allow probably a little more through right. than you would for your home base. Um, certain words that you would automatically block may actually apply to a county problem right. and you have to allow them through. Right. So 3% is, is actually pretty good what we allow in. Okay. But we have to make sure all those others are taken out of the system. Do you all have a way of uh, <coughs> figuring out <coughs> the number of viruses that try to get in? Yes, we do. You, you can actually see that? We can see exactly what's trying to hit our system and I'm very pleased to say that in the nine years I've been here, County government, this Alachua County government has never come down due to a virus. Right. Um, over 10,000 <coughs> viruses were stopped before they entered into our system last year alone. The number of viruses is growing as people, are, uh, hackers are getting smarter and smarter on how to uh, hit into systems. County, uh, city, and state governments are a prime target because of the information that's on their systems. I can tell you that there have been times when major cities New York City, LA, Chicago, have gone down for a day because of a primary virus. University of Florida has had a problem in the past. We have not, so we've got enough layers of security in place that we've been very fortunate here that we've stopped every virus that's trying to come in. They're getting harder and harder to do, and we have to stay on top of it and constantly upgrade our virus protections to make sure we're covering the most recent, most current viruses that are out there. And then finally, you've got a telecom. Yes, team. we do. We, we still have telephones. We still have telephones. <coughs> we still have telephones. Um, again, the goal was to make sure we're trying to minimize costs as much as possible. So we do have a very small group of individuals that just focuses on moving, managing, and maintaining the phone systems that we have here in the county. Over 2,400 uh, county phones are out there that we have to take care of. This year, uh, we did something a little different. We had a very old phone system out at the Public Works office. It was over 25 years old. And we, the only reason we had to replace it was there were no more parts anymore to get to try and fix it when it broke. So rather than go with the current system that we have here in the downtown area, we decided to try voice over IP, where you utilize your data network for voice transmission. And the reason we did that was the cost was less than a third of what a standard telephone system would be and transmission out to that outlying area in that remote location. And we installed it, it's working great. We're using again the data transmission that we already had in place so we didn't have to buy additional lines out to that location. And it's working fantastically. 
Does that mean it will be coming downtown at some point? At or? some point, but right now the phone system we have downtown, you know, it's not brand new, but you know what, it's working and we're able to manage it and it's, it's working very well for us. So there's no reason to replace it. Uh, a lot of cities and states that were using their local phone companies for their services have gone to voice over IP to save money. Because we had our own internal network and our own internal fiber optic ring, we don't have that cost. So there's no reason for us to quickly move to voice over IP. But in the future, I'm sure that'll take place. As we need to expand um, our roles here, our government role, we probably will. Well, thank you for that uh, team overview. Uh, let, let's talk about some of the things that those teams have done over the years, because you've had You've had some amazing projects, particularly in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> one massive project that you undertook was a kind of complete redesign of the county's website. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a remarkable process to, wa to watch, and I think it has resulted in an amazing tool for our citizens. But uh, tell us, why, why did we do a website redesign, and how did that go? Well, we started that redesign a little over a year ago, um, rolled it out this past summer, and what the citizens see are you know, a new look, a new format. Um, one goal that we had in mind that the manager had set for us was to, was to develop a citizen-centric website. Everyone's like, well, what does that mean? Well, it basically means ease of use for our citizens. Make it easy for people to find information on our website. The prior website had all the information on there, but it wasn't easy necessarily to find. You'd have to click through various pages to try and find it. Right. We've made that easier with the format that's been set up, and especially on the home page, to easily find the most frequently visited sites. So from the citizen's viewpoint, we hope it's easier to use, it's easier to find information. Now from our standpoint on the backside for the network, we redesigned it totally from the ground up to include what is called SharePoint Collaboration Services. Not to get too detailed on it, but it allows for departments now to interact with each other, share information, share documents, work together on projects on documents. And that was a huge, huge help for us. Also, the old system, the old network, the old website, it was cumbersome to update. If someone had to have updates of information, they had to call my department. Right. We had to set aside time to do the updates. And that usually took some time and old information was out there until we got around to it. Right. Now the new system, there's a representative in every department that's been trained and can update the information as they need to. It can be right. hourly, every minute, whatever. They can do it on their and own. And they're the experts. They're the experts. What needs they're to the experts. And it's done quickly. It's right. truly a live system now that's being updated constantly. Well, I can certainly attest that it's very user friendly. I use it frequently, uh, particularly right. for the home page. Uh, another thing, and I'm going to brag a little bit about uh, your applications department because I work with them frequently. Um, <coughs> we got a request from a commissioner asking why we didn't have more video on our website. Mm -hmm. And your folks came up with just an elegant uh, solution to not only have video on the website, but you don't have to leave the website to see the video. As a matter of fact, in, a, in about a week, this interview will be on the ITS homepage. Can't wait to see <laughs> <laughs> And people will be able to play it right there without navigating away from the page. Uh, so, <coughs> and, I, and I love the features of, uh, on the homepage, it says, I want to, on top. And then it says, get a pothole filled, or get information on this, or get information on that. Citizen-centric is a, is a good term for it. Well, the use of technology, as you know, spans all age groups, not just the young people with their iPhones. It's all age groups. They're on our website. We, we're seeing numerous sits on our website every day. We know people are going on the website. And I think when you can tell your story, as you just said, in a video, it's so easy for people to go on there and learn something very quickly hear about it firsthand, whether it be a press release or a news report or just updated information. That's so important. People want to see what's going on. And they can't necessarily always see it live at the right. meetings that take right. place here all the time. But they can go online anytime and see our county commission meetings, right. these types of talks. It's, it's wonderful, wonderful service for them to see the video. And <coughs> now they can see those, they actually can see them live. You know, there was a time when mm -hmm. the folks in the unincorporated area who didn't have access mm -hmm. to Cox Cable couldn't get Channel 12. Right. They really had no recourse except coming to a meeting, which right. can be, you know, hard for some people. It's true. It's true. Kevin, um, 
We talked a lot about hardware support and maintenance, but I know there's been a huge green initiative in Alachua County, and I know your department has been heavily involved with that. Can you, can you tell us about that? Having a green IT environment has been a, a major focus for us for the past couple of years. Um, we've really taken the term sustainability very seriously. We have to have a sustainable environment, and technology needs to play a role. In the past, you know, when we would have to change out computers, you would have a big box desktop computer. Parts of it could be recycled. Unfortunately, large parts of it ended up in landfills. Mm -hmm. um, we've moved, to, started to move away from that type of hardware for employees. I have my show and tell here okay. today. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. <laughs> well, this here is called a virtualized desktop unit, a VDU. And basically what this does is replace that large desktop terminal that sat underneath your desk that people constantly kick and are in the way. Uh -huh. This replaces that as the communication device back to a computer server that, that really acts as the computer for the individual. So no hard drive on here. There's no hard drive, so nothing saved here. Now this isn't is, this an old idea coming back? It is. Wasn't there a time when? There was a time when you had mainframes uh -huh. that sort of oversaw what was taking place at individual desktops. Mm -hmm. This is doing it in a fashion. Um, you still have, though, the flexibility of interacting with multiple applications and multiple services. They don't need to reside on your desktop anymore. Right. Now they reside in what we call a virtualized server in a server room that can handle multiple tasks. And this just becomes the communication device. So you have your keyboard, your monitor and this little device that sits either on your desk next to your monitor you can put it down on the floor if you wish but basically this replaces the computer now what's nice about that is the cost of these units is less than half of a desktop unit and the amount of energy they use is considerably less than half of what a desktop unit uses is that right and unlike a desktop unit that gets warm when it's on all day uh -huh. and then you have to cool the room because it's warm right this generates very little heat uh -huh. so you save not just on the energy that the computer uses but also on the energy you're spending on trying to cool down the office or the room that you're in do you have any idea yet of the savings that are gonna this is the first year we're okay. doing um, what we're hearing is the amount of energy these use is approximately 10 percent of the amount of energy being used by a desktop unit that's what the manufacturers are telling us so or in other words really it's 90 percent more efficient correct so we're really looking forward to rolling more of these units out um, they won't work for everybody because if you have a unique application that does need to reside at your desktop for you to use you're going to do that but majority of the computers in the next three to four years as we change out our computers will go to these types of units. Kevin, I've got so many things to talk to you about, but we're, we're running out of time. Uh, let's, let's just do a little lightning round here. Uh, one of the very cool things that you all did recently was timesheet uh, digitalization or whatever you call it. Tell us, tell us quickly about Electron that. Electronic time reporting. We put that in place. Uh, a couple years ago, I was looking at the volume of paperwork on my desk that I was signing for timesheets and realized we really needed to come up with some way of making an electronic system that would, A, eliminate the amount of paper that we use countywide, as well as make it easier for managers to sign off on timesheets, monitor timesheets, and get it up through the ranks quicker and into pro payroll processing faster. And I can bear witness, it's easy <laughs> to use, it's much simpler than the paper Wonderful. process. Speaking of that, <coughs> uh, one thing that got some attention in the paper recently, but they left out that we had been doing it for about five years, is e-agenda, which get, gets rid of mountains of paper. Tell us about e-agenda. Well, the old agenda system, again, commissioners would bring in a stack of paper, as you just said, to, to do the board meetings. We rolled out electronic agenda processing system about five years ago. You'll see up at the dais now when you come to a board meeting that they all have a laptop. They can go on and see all the backup information via the laptop and actually do their voting as well through an electronic system back to the clerk's uh, podium. So it's a great system. I know the city has recently gone to that. The university has also for their board meetings have recently gone to that. Right. But um, it works great here yeah. and does help us substantially save on paper. Well, I know, and we talked about this earlier, a huge priority of the county commission and <coughs> the county manager has been wide open government, transparent government, and uh, 
let me just say I'm very, very happy with the manager and the county commission that we currently have. Has made it very clear that they fully support what we're doing in technology. Uh, they've fully supported the investment that we've made in technology. Um, you know, the funding is just an issue of the economy. We fully understand that. But we really appreciate that the fact that they support it. Um, and it's not the issue right now that they don't support it. It's an issue of what funding is available. But we really appreciate their support. And you know this this show is primarily to try to give citizens a <coughs> kind of a primer on Alachua County and mm -hmm. civic education side of it. Uh, I just want to, as we close, encourage citizens to go visit that website. Yes. Take a little bit of time, and you can get an amazing education in what county government does. Uh, when I came into the county six years ago from uh, the public sector. Um, I had no idea the scope of county government. Mm -hmm. And one of the tools that I used back then and I continue to use daily is our website. I, if I can't find someone, I can go to that website, go to their page, and usually get the information that I'm looking for. And uh, just thank you for what you do. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you very much again. Appreciate it.